started. Heavenly Father, thank you so much as we get into your word. Again, I ask for the Holy Spirit's utterance, and I ask that you would just show us marvelous things and truths from your word. Thank you, Father, that your word is going to set us free this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. I started a new series last week on what happens when a believer dies. What happens when a believer dies. And last week, I kind of laid the groundwork Remember, we covered a, a couple good things because I had to really lay the groundwork last week in order to get into what we're going to talk about today. And we talked about, listen, one of the things we talked about last week that you don't have to fear death as a believer. Why? We read from Hebrews that Jesus tasted death for every one of us. Amen. Jesus, what? Tasted death for every one of us. And one translation said he experienced death. So you don't have to be afraid. Jesus already went ahead of us and he experienced death for us so we don't have to fear death at all. Amen. And the Bible says he did that so we wouldn't live the rest of our lifetime in bondage to fear or the fear of death. Amen. We don't have to fear death anymore. Amen? Amen. Amen. We don't have to, as a believer, we don't have to fear death. And, and then we talked about that another uh, principle or, or, that I needed to get across is that you'll not cease to exist. Some people think that when they die, they, they die like a dog or something and they, they don't exist anymore. No, no, you will exist because First uh, Thessalonians 5.23 says that you're a spirit being. The, when the Bible says you were made in the image of God, it's referring to the spirit part of God. Also to, to his form too. Did you know that God, if you were to put an image on God, did you know how he would look? The Bible talks that God has fingers. The, the hand of the Lord, the arm of the Lord. He told Moses, I'm going to show you my backside. So you know, if you were to put a form on God, He looks a lot like you and I. The form. Amen? But He's in great shape though. <laughs> he's beautiful. He's perfect. right? Amen? Amen? He's an awesome God. And, 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 and so we were made in the image in that He gave us a spirit just like Him and our form is, is in him. No wonder the enemy hates us so much. Because we were made in the image of God. And, and the enemy is a jealous, jealous, jealous God. I mean, not a God, but a, a jealous uh, being who wants to be like God. Amen. And so, and so that, that's why it's so important that that's why Jesus said somebody must be born again because you don't just die. When you die, something's gonna, you, your spirit's going to go somewhere. Amen. So we talked about that. And then the other thing we covered is you will continue to be conscious. There's no such thing as soul sleep. Where you just die and you're, you know, your, your body's just there and, you're, and people think they're, they're, they're there. A lot of times when we say rest in peace for the believer, well, I know what they mean, but they're not resting. They're as much alive as any all get out. They're, they're alive in the presence of God. They're not resting in peace. Amen. They're They're alive. They're alive. Yes, they're in peace as far as being with the Lord, but they're as much alive today as right now. Amen. And then again, I'm not going to go through the, listen, last, it's, it's on the, uh, our YouTube page, Manuel YouTube, and go there and listen to it because we cover, we cover Lazarus and the rich man, how in the Old Testament there was two compartments. Uh, the first compartment was paradise or, the, uh, or Abraham's bosom. The second compartment is the place of torments. An uh, 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 Old Testament saint went to paradise. Uh, Old Testament unbeliever went to the place of torments. But after Jesus rose from the dead, the Bible says he led captivity captive, and that means he took the Old Testament saints to have directly to heaven. So now in the New Testament, when someone dies as a believer, they go directly, and we're, that's our, we're going to be my first point today, to be with the Lord. Amen. Amen. So let's talk about what happens when a believer dies. The first, here's my first point. We will be present with the Lord. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Pastor Andrew, I don't know why this thing is not... You want to get this, Eric, and check it out, see what, what's going on with it? Give it to him. It was working before, but maybe I pushed something. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Look at this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and we're going to start reading in verse 1. Verse 1, look at this. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, 
a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Isn't that something? I love it. So, Paul, so Paul's given an illustration here that if our earthly house, so he's calling your body an earthly house. Right? But I like this illustration though. That's why you see what I brought here. He calls it a what? A tent. Amen? Uh, I found this at Walmart this morning. 14, 14 something. You can buy it. I thought this is cute. Amen? Amen? And, and uh, uh, for those of you who don't have a doghouse in the back, you can get one of these. Amen? Listen, for we know that our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed. We have a building from God, a house not made with hands, so eternal in the heavens. So you see, you have, listen, look at what happens. When your body dies, Paul says that the, he calls your body a tent. Notice what he says. He's calling your body what? A tent. Amen? Now, I don't know about you. That's why I bought this. Let's see, so if you want to adjust that, so you can see. I bought this tent here to show the illustration. So he's given an example that this tent is like your earthly body. The real you is the person. How many like camping? I like camping. And now that I'm getting older, I don't know if I want to camp anymore, but <laughs> I, I like camping. Anybody like camping? Amen? It's fun to go camping, right? It's fun to go camping. What do you do? You go to camping, you know, go, what happens? You go inside, you know, I'm going to go and see if I fit in this. <laughs> so, you know, you go camping, it's fun. You know, I really like camping. I wish this had a window. It does have some air, so I won't suffocate. But anyway, <laughs> so, I like camping. Do you like camping? <laughs> Paul says, Paul says, you know what he's saying? Pretend that I'm the spirit. The real me is my body that's in this tent. I'm the spirit. I'm, Paul says, I'm in this tent. So, I like camping. You know what I'm saying? Let's go camping for a week. All right, fun, awesome. So, we're fun. We're playing games. We're doing some great stuff and, and having a good time in the tent, right? But then, but then uh, uh, Pastor Lucy says, let's stay two weeks. Okay, we'll stay two weeks. We have fun and whatever. But then, you know, but this is so fun. Let's stay, another, let's stay for a whole year. Let's go camping for a year. So we stay in here for a whole year. We're having fun. We're cooking. I don't know how you can cook in here, but anyway. <laughs> but, but how about, okay, let's stay two years. How about two years? Two years camping. One girl right over here, teenage girl, she says, I want to camp for two years. So praise the Lord. That's fine. Two years, we're camping. Two years goes by. But then you know what? You turn three. Let's go camping. Anybody want to still camping after two years, three years? No. Right? How about 50? I'm 50. What am I? 50. <laughs> I want to be 56. I want to be 56. I'm 55? I'm going to be 56? I already got my senior discount. So, you know, this is fun, right? But I don't know if I want to camp for all those years. Let's say 100 years. 200. 120. Can you imagine camping for 120 years? So what is Paul saying? If this tent is destroyed. So he's relating this tent like your body. When this is destroyed, what happens? If this gets destroyed, let's say, let's say a storm or a bear comes and destroys my tent. That's what happens. Let's say I'm camping and a bear you know, destroys my tent. What's going to happen? I'm going to pop out. The spirit of me, myself, is what leaves the tent and goes to be with the Lord. See that? So, as great as camping is, and that's why, he, look at what he says in the next verse. Check this out in the next verse. He says, he says, for in this we groan. As great as camping is, to do it for, forever, I don't want to be camping forever. Amen? It's fun. Why? How many know if you camp with your tent for about three, four years, the tent starts getting ragged. The st all of a sudden you get a hole, rain starts falling in your tent. Amen? Pretty soon, maybe the windows aren't as clear as open. I like one minister, he put it this way. Hey, how are you doing? He says, well, right now, my, I mean, through my windows, he was talking about his eyes, things look a little dim. <laughs> I can't see very well. But inside of me, I'm doing great. The real him is doing great. But he says, on the outside, my tent, it's getting pretty old. My glass is kind of dim. 
Some of you, your glasses, that's why you're wearing glasses, some of you, right? Or, or some of you, you know what I'm saying, as you get older, you know, cataracts sometimes try to get on and whatever. What's happening? It's getting older. The tent's getting older. It eventually is going to what? The tent is eventually going to decay and die. Or in other words, it's not usable anymore. And that's what happens with your body. If you live long enough, your body will decay and whatever. It's not usable. So what happens? Hey, I'm not going to stay in the See, some, some people want to stay here in this tent. No, I don't know about you. I don't want to stay in this tent. It's getting old. I'm, I'm ready to go. See that? And notice that's why he says in verse 2, for in this we groan. He's meaning, man, you know what? As much as I enjoy being in this tent, yet I groan, he says. He says, listen, earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from what? Heaven. Come on now. See, you have a house in the heavens. Amen. Pastor, how is it? I don't know. I don't know all these things, but I do know God's going to give you something, some kind of body. I'm talking about before your resurrection glorified body in the in the be in between time before Jesus comes back and then gives your physical body turns it into a glorified body the same body Jesus had we'll talk about that later another Sunday but today I, I just want to focus on two things we will be present with the Lord notice what he said let's keep reading verse 3 if indeed having been clothed we shall not be found what naked verse 4 for we who are in this what tent he's saying the same thing we're in this tent and we're groaning Come on now. How many of you knew sometimes, I know Lucy and I, we, we know after a busy day, and I'm like, man, I wish I wouldn't get so tired. You know, because our spirit, our heart wants to keep working, wants to keep moving, right? You're, Jesus said, you're, 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 you know, your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak. This body gets old and tired. I don't know about you, but I don't want to, you know, come on. In fact, I, I wish Jesus would come soon. I don't want to get any older. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting the grays. I know, I know, but I still groan. <laughs> That's what Paul's saying. He says, he, says, he says, for we who are in this tent groan, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further, come on now, clothed. With what? That mortality may be swallowed up by life. Come on now, look at verse 5. Now, he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given us what? The Spirit as a guarantee. Glory to God. Somebody says, well, Pastor, how is God going to know who to rapture when he comes back? How is he going to know which spirit to rapture? Very easy. You're going to have the seal of the Spirit, the seal of approval, which is the Holy Spirit. When you were born again, Ephesians says you were sealed with the Holy Spirit. So your spirit is sealed. You're untouchable. Amen? Amen. Your spirit is, oh, it's sealed and untouchable. Well, then I heard of somebody having a, no, the enemy can oppress your mind, whatever, but he can't touch your spirit. Amen. Amen? He may try to mess with your mind. He may try to mess with your body. But you, you're, if you're sealed with the Holy Spirit, you're born again. And that's how, the Holy Spirit, how God's going to be able to tell who is. He's going to see the seal. What? It's the Holy Spirit within them. Amen. Amen. Now I don't have time to get to those scriptures that, are, that talk about us. Oh yeah, there it is. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, verse 5, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. Look at next verse. Verse 6. Verse 6 says this. Notice, so we are always confident. You got it on there or is it stuck? Oh, okay. I don't know why mine is not showing it. So we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are what? Absent. absent. See, so when we're in our tents, we're absent what? From the Lord, right? But look at verse, verse 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. I remember the first time I really got the revelation of this. Uh, we had a young man in, in the church we used to attend. He was 21 years old that, that died in a tragic accident and went home to be with the Lord. And man, I was studying along these lines and this one stuck out so much. You know, so much we preached about faith, about you gotta, you gotta believe God for this and you gotta believe God for that, which is awesome and, and so forth and so on. But the context of that scripture of walking by faith and not by sight deals with when you lose someone, when you're away from the body and present with the Lord. So he's saying, this is where you got to walk by faith and not by sight, with that when some, a loved one that you know is gone, you got to believe they're what? That they're, they're gone to be with the Lord. Amen. Amen. 
he's talking about life and death here, that we walk by faith and not by sight about that. The context was that. It wasn't about believing God for things. Yeah. It was believing His Word that this is what happens. Amen? In this context. When somebody's gone, a believer, they go home to be with the Lord. We walk by faith. We live our lives by what we believe, not by what we feel. Amen. So that's why people are scared of death and fear because they don't know. They don't know what's going to happen. But we, by faith, when we, when we lose a loved one, we don't, we don't sorrow like the world sorrows. We sorrow with hope, with expectation. Why? Because we walk by faith and not by what we feel. We really believe we will see our, our loved ones in the Lord again. And then notice the next verse. Here it is. Here it is, verse 8. We are confident. Yes, well pleased. Rather to be what? Absent from the body and to be what? Present with the Lord. He says, I'd rather be absent from the body and to be where? Present. So that's my first point. We will be what? The first thing's going to happen, it's a quick transition. It's not some intermediate state or whatever. You're going to quickly trans, tra you know, be translated or move to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen? Amen? You quickly to go be with the Lord. So to be absent from the body is to be present. So when I, so when we leave, leave this tent, this body we're in, we go to home. How I many know? Just like camping. As much as I enjoy camping and everything, but if you're there for so long, it's like how I many? I know with Lucy, it's after about a week. That's it. I'm ready to go home. Let's go home. So what is it? What is she? In other words, she's tired of camping. Amen. She wants her real home, not this, this temporary. This is a, so guess what? This body you're in, and you know what we do with this body? We, tr we do so many things with this body. We, what, color it, we, we, we make up, we do all, we're, and that's fine, there's nothing wrong, like, you know, Brother Higgins, if the bar needs paint, go ahead and paint it, but that's okay. <laughs> but, 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 but the world is so focused on what? Putting all their investment on something that is gonna what? Amen. Don't put, the bottom line is don't put all your marbles on your tent. I mean, yeah, don't get me wrong. You know, do what you can. Do, I'm, not, I'm not against staying healthy and doing Why? Because if you don't take care of this tent, then you do go on and be with the Lord. Amen? If all you eat is ding-dongs, then guess what? Your tent will be full of ding-dongs and, and, and the ding-dongs will push you out and you'll go to be with the Lord. Right? <laughs> Amen? At least you'll be full of it, but anyway. <laughs> oh, God help me. Anyway, let me show you another example. And I brought this uh, because we see this in, uh, uh, I want to give this illustration. Yeah, check this out. I brought this here. Here's a, uh, and I, I think I gave this illustration last week a little bit, but I'm going to just do it again. You like my purple glove? This is Pastor Lucy. That's why I got a purple glove, you know, because, all right? She's sitting down, right? See, see her little face? You can't see it. It's her, her little face right now. I try to draw you like a girl, but it was kind of tough. Anyway, there's her hand, arms, and there's her legs. She's having crossed. She's just sitting. Anyway, so he, same thing. Your body's like this glove. Your spirit is the one inside the glove. So what happens when, when, your, when your body dies... And so forth, what happens? Your spirit leaves or slips out. And there, there's your body laying. Amen? Even though, yes, this is, was the tent of her spirit, let's say, and so forth, yet that's not the real her. Yes, this was the cover of, the, of that, but it wasn't the real her. Now, well, let's not, so I decided I bought one for the guys too. An old beat up, my old work love. In fact, look at that. See, that's what happens. Right? See my face? <laughs> so, so it's the same thing, see? I, I did put some hair on there, black hair. So, so anyway, I'm, I'm chilling with her. You know, we're chilling out. Again, it's the same thing. You got to see it. Your body is like this glove. It's eventually going to decay, get old. In fact, the Bible says the body dies because of sin, but the spirit is alive because of what? Righteousness. righteousness. 
the righteousness that God gave you. You're right with God, so your spirit lives on. So the same thing's going to happen. If the Lord tarries, I'm believing He's going to come. Some of us, I believe, we're going to live on to see the rapture of the church when the church gets taken away. But if, if the Lord tarries and, and we go on to be with the Lord, then what happens? Same thing. Body will be laid there with all my extra... Right? All my other parts, my loose parts. Anyway, so there it is. Again, so my spirit goes on. So the body lives, shh, spirit goes to be with the Lord. Again, this is so simple, but yet, you'd be surprised how many people don't know that around you. Amen? Let's go to Philippians chapter 1, look at this. Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1, verse 21 and tw through 23. We're going to read that. Philippians chapter 1, verse 21 through 23. Go ahead and put that up. Have that up there. For to me to live is Christ, Paul says, to die is gain. Wow. See, you're gaining when you die. Amen? Now, not everybody don't leave here and say, hey, hey, I'm planning on leaving. No, no, no. We still need you here. Amen? It's not your time. God has you here for a reason. For to me to live is Christ and to die is what? Gain. But look at verse 22. But if I live on in the flesh, this will mean fruit for my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I cannot tell. Verse 23. Notice. I'm hard pressed between the two. Having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Paul's saying, man, you know what? Some days, I, I, I really feel like going home to be with the Lord. But, you know what? He says, you know, far better. He says, but you know what? He's, he goes on. He's like, but I'm going to hang out for you guys. I'm going to hang out a little bit longer for you guys. You need me around. Amen? Amen. But he says, though, but you know what? If I were to go, you know, look at verse 24. Never, go, go ahead and put verse 24. Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is more needful for you. Amen? So, so God has us here. You know my mom, she's 96. And she, you know, she's, been, she's talked about going home and, and whatever. And I says, well, mom, God still has you here for a reason. Amen? Probably to be praying for us. <laughs> it's probably to pray for us. And she does. And she does. You know? And, and you know, thank God for that. So, nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is more needful. So, but listen, going with the Lord is far better. Far better. Amen. In fact, Jude 124 and 25, here's the good news. But Pastor, how, how can I be sure that I'll make it? Look at Jude, Jude uh, chapter 1. There's only one chapter, actually. Verse 24 and 25. Let's go there to Jude. Now to him who is able to keep you from what? Stumbling. And to present you what? Faultless before the presence of you see, you're going to go to His presence. To present you faultless before the presence of His glory with exceeding joy. And then the next verse says, of course, be the glory and honor and so forth and so on. So notice, who's able to keep you from stumbling? Who's going to keep you? God. The Lord Jesus is going to keep you. Amen? You're in His saving arms. In fact, Jesus said, anybody who's in my hand, no one can, can pull out of my hand. In fact, if you think that, then he further says, anybody who's in my Father's hand, he's, he's saying, anybody who's in my hand, no one can pull me out. But guess what? Jesus is in his Father's hand. And no one can pull, says, no one can pull, me, pull you out of my Father. Yeah, but pastor, how about the person that wants to jump out of his hand? Well, who would be foolish enough to do that? Who wants to jump out of his hand? Amen. Yeah, some people, but they don't, they don't, that's because they don't know who they are. Amen? They don't know who they are. When you fall in love with, with God and know how much He loves you, you don't want it. You want to be with Him, not away from Him. Amen? And so do you see that? He's able to keep you from stumbling, and He's going to present you what? Faultless in His presence. Amen? Now, here's a second point I want you to see. And this, you know it, but it's simple, but we've got to look at it. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. So number one, we'll get, when a person dies, they're present with the Lord. And number two, we will be in heaven. Number two, we will be in heaven. Look at Philippians chapter 3, 
Verse 20, the Bible says here, For our citizenship is where? In heaven, from which we also, also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, you're citizens of heaven. Come on now. Amen. So when somebody asks, well, who's the alien? We're the ones. <laughs> We're the aliens right now. Amen? Amen? Why? Your citizenship is in heaven. Yeah. This, this is temporary. Yes. Now, it's true. Pastor, are we going to be like in heaven forever, forever? It's true that heaven is actually going to come. Because uh, uh, you know the Bible says there's three heavens. There's the heaven above where you, where you see our atmosphere. And then there's the heaven where you see all the stars in the universe. And the third heaven is past the stars in the universe where, where God's throne is. Amen? But somebody, but pastor, again, how can God, how could a God entered if, if you said last week that God never was created, He's always existed. How in the world did He enter into our time zone? He can. You know, I could have a box in here. And that box represents the universe. God could easily get into the box. And he did. He became a man. And he can also get out of the box. He can enter that time zone. He can get out of it any time. That's why sometimes you'll see angels have appeared and then they get out. But what I'm trying to tell you is you got the earthly heaven around the earth. You got the where all the stars, the galaxies, that's not, but where God's throne, heaven is, is beyond that. It's outside the universe. That's where God dwells. There's three heavens. Now, but here's what's going to happen though. God, even though he's in heaven, I'm getting ahead of myself, but you're going to learn this later. He's going to bring uh, the new Jerusalem down from heaven and God's going to make a new heavens and a new earth and put this new Jerusalem. In fact, I'm going to show you an image in a little bit and it's going to float above the earth like a satellite. It's amazing, but you're going to, we're going to look at... So our, even though we're going to be in heaven temporarily until Jesus comes back and then we're going to rule and reign for a thousand years in the millennium, but after that, when He makes a new heaven and a new earth, He's going to bring this new Jerusalem down, and I'm going to explain in a little bit of detail. Look at John 14. Let me lay the, the, the case for this. John 14, verse 1 and 3. So your citizenship is in heaven. Amen. John 14, 1 and 3. Let not your heart be troubled, the Bible says. You believe in God, believe also in me. Verse 2. In my Father's house are many what? Amen. Come on now. You're not going to have a little cabin, a little, oh, Pastor, I just want to have a little tent in heaven. No, no. You're going to have a mansion. Amen? You're going to have a mansion. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Amen. I go to prepare a place for you. Verse 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'm going to come. I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be what? Amen? So G where did Jesus go these last two days? Remember, a, 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 a thousand years is like a day with the Lord. And a day is like a thousand years. So Jesus, in his, if, if God, look, God looking at the universe and Jesus being gone, to him it's like he's been gone two days. Amen? He says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And I'm going to come back for you. Amen? It's like a husband preparing, you know, a, a honeymoon for his bride. I'm going to, go to I'm preparing a place for you. And I'm coming back for you. Amen? And so he says, I go to prepare a place, but okay then, let's go to Revelation 21. Here's my point. Heaven's real. You're going to go to heaven. Heaven is a real place. But that heaven's going to come down, though, to the earth, to the new heavens. Eventually, after the thousand years, it's going to come down. So in other words, when somebody says you're going to be in heaven forever where God resides outside the universe, no. You will right now. But when Jesus comes back and after the thousand years, you're actually going to come down in, with God in the new Jerusalem. Amen. Pastor, what do you mean? How can everybody... I'm going to show you in just a little bit. In, 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 in Revelation chapter 21, let's go to verse 1. Revelation chapter 21, verse 1. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Come on now. That's why we... we let's not put all our marbles here on this earth. Because it's all going to be burned up one day. Who wants to have more ashes? I got more ashes than you do. My ash pile is bigger than yours. <laughs> Everybody's, 
always competing, right? <laughs> and listen, for the first heaven and the first earth had what? Passed away. Listen, sorry honey, there was no more sea. She loves the ocean. <laughs> but don't worry, what God makes, you're going to love it so much, you're going to have your own personal lake or something. I don't know, your own ocean or something. Amen? Listen, prepared, listen, then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven. See, it's coming down out of heaven from God. Listen, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Some people are mistaken that this is the bride. This is not the bride. It's a city prepared as a bride. The bride is the church. Amen. We are the bride of Christ. Yes, amen. amen. Not the, it's, it, as a bride. It's not saying it is the bride. It's as a bride. So we are the bride of Christ. Amen. We're the ones Jesus is in love with. Amen? Amen. But notice what's going to happen. Look at verse 3. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will what? Dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. So listen, God loves us so much. I like to say it this way. In the Old Testament, you know, God so much wanted to be a part of us that he dwelt in the tabernacle tent. So he was among them, right? And, and God said, you know what? That's not enough. I think I'm going to become like one of them. So he comes in Jesus Christ, becomes a man, and then God dwells among us. And God said, you know what? That's not enough. I really want to be involved in man and in mankind. So guess what? He puts his spirit within us. Now he lives, oh my goodness, within the inside of us. But even then he's saying, you know what, that's not enough that my spirit lives within them. I'm going to build a place where we're going to be together like a family. My spirit's within them. I'm in them. They are with me. I'm their God. They're my people. They're going to see me. They're going to see me face to face. Ooh, what a good day. I'm looking forward to that day. Isn't that awesome? That should show you how much God loves you. It's not enough that He's around you. It's not enough that He lives in you. He wants, to li he wants you to literally be in front of Him. He wants, you're going to be with God. God's going to live with you. You're going to hang out with God. Look at the next verse. Verse 4. Verse 4. And God, what will heaven be like here? Here's what it's going to be like. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. Some people think, oh, pastor, I'm in the no pain, no gain. I'm in the sacrifice herself or whatever. You know what? I don't know where we got that, but he already did that for us. I thank God that it's not like what you think. See, God gets blamed for a lot of stuff. Why would God allow this? And why? Let, me, let me tell you something. God is a loving and a fair God, a just God. And, and no one, when you, when you go before Him, you ain't going to be accusing God of, how could you let? No, your mouth is going to be like, ah, 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 holy, holy, <laughs> Hosanna. You, I don't know what you're going to do. You're going to cast your crown down and you're going to be on your knees. You can be so happy to be in His presence. All those questions you had. Oh, by the way, Pastor, I forgot to mention about that. Uh, we're going to, at the end here real quick, if you have any questions, Pastor Andrew's going to put this thing up that you can write down. Did you, did you already put that up? Go ahead and put that up for a second. Any questions you wanted to ask me, I'm not saying I might have the answer, but if there's any questions you want to ask in this area, he's going to put this thing up and you can put, type it on there. That way you remain anonymous so you don't think it's a foolish, some people, it's a foolish question. Don't ask that question. Do all dogs go to heaven? Or whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? So what you need to do is on your mobile device. Yeah, on your mobile device. On your browser, Chrome, mm -hmm. Safari, go to menti.com, and then you can use the code 590049. So if you have any questions, and then go there. Question in 143 yeah. or less, and then we'll field some questions at the end. Yeah, I'll try to answer some if we can. If not, we'll do it next week and so forth. So go ahead and put, if you have any questions, you know, type that on there and you can remain anonymous and you'll look very smart. <laughs> let's go back to Revelation though real quick. Revelation 21 and now let's go to, uh, um, what was, I think I left off in verse 4. four. And God, here, here's, you know what heaven's going to be like? Here's what heaven's going to be like. It's going to be a place of no more. Come on now, look at this. 
Verse 4, God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Guess what? In heaven, no more tears. We're not going to need that Johnson & Johnson no more tears thing. No more tears. Come on now. What else? There shall be no more death. Come on, no. No more separation. No more death. Hallelujah. All that we're going through right now is temporary. There's going to be no more death. Amen. What else? Come on now. See, this is God's plan. Here's, here's, this is for eternity. Right now, where we're living at is just a little speck of time, a dash. Sometimes where you see in the cemetery, that little dash, that lived from 1920-something to 19 or 2000, whatever. It's just a dash. Our life is just a little dash, but eternity is a line that's forever. And he says he's going to wipe away every tear from our eyes. There's going to be no more death. Listen, no more sorrow. Think about something you've been sorrowful about lately. Guess what? No more. It's a place of no more. No more sorrow. Amen. What else? No crying. Come on now. No more crying. Check out this one. There shall be no more pain. Ooh. Oh, pastor, no pain, no gain. I don't care. Go ahead. Get all the pain you want. I don't want any of it. Amen. Call me a wimp. I don't care. I'm in his pain became my gain. His pain became my gain. Amen. That's what I want. Amen. Come on. A place of no more pain. Amen. No more pain. Thank God for it. For the former things of what? Past. See, this is God's ultimate goal. This is God's ultimate plan right here. You're going to be living in a place. No more pain. No more crying. No more fear. No more worry. No more sorrow. But it doesn't mean you're not going to be doing anything. Some people think, are we going to be just floating on a, on a cloud with a, you know, with a violin? Am I going to have a little baby butt? No. You know how they see the little baby flaming? And that's, no. <laughs> as cute as that is. You know. No. <laughs> Amen. Listen, he says in verse 5, Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write these words, write for these words are what? True and faithful. It's going to happen, people. It's going to happen. Verse 6, it's going to happen. And he said to me, It is done. See, when he does, when he does that new Jerusalem, notice what he says, It is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. Now, Pastor Andrew, if you want to get ready and put those images, how big is this New Jerusalem? Just to give you an idea how big it is. I know some say it's between 1,000, 300, and whatever. Personally, I, I believe some, from other texts, it shows it's 1,500. It's 1,500 miles long. And he's going to try to put that image up. Here's one of the images. I don't know if you can lower the front lights. But uh, see this? It's a thousand. See, I don't believe it's a thousand. I believe it's a thousand five hundred and so forth miles across. You know what that'd be like? Like f here from Phoenix to Kansas City, I think, is about a thousand five hundred. From here to Because I know Oklahoma, uh, Tulsa is about a thousand two hundred and something like that. So about Kansas City, I think, or somewhere around there. Would, from here to there, that's how big the city is. I mean, oh, Phoenix is pretty wide, pretty big, right? This city is from here. You keep traveling all the way past, you know, Flagstaff. Keep traveling to Albuquerque, New Mexico. Keep traveling into in Texas. Amen. Go get a steak there. And then from there, you just keep going into Oklahoma. Amen. And you just keep going all the way past Oklahoma into Missouri. Going to Kansas City. Kansas City, here I come. Right? That's how far. That's how. Guess what, though? That's the width. The length is the same. I mean, the length and the width and the height. It's that high. That's why it wouldn't be possible for it to rest on the earth. Because it would be going like this. Because the earth is circle. But it's going to be a new heavens though. And a new earth. So some believe it's going to be like a satellite. that'll. And, and, and it says, if you read the other scriptures, it's, that's where the glory... Jesus is going to be the sun. Isn't that something in the English word? God put sun for S-U-N. 
But when the Son of God is S-O-N, I don't think it was by mistake God did that. Jesus will be the light that radiates through that temple. It says streets are like gold, and it's clear crystal gold, so that means a light is just going to radiate through everything. And some believe that that's going to be the light of the name. That's going to be like, there's going to be no more sun or moon. That, the heavenly Jerusalem, it's actually going to be what gives light to the earth. Now think about that. So, so to you know, now yes, I you know yes, there's you know some people say there's going to be more people in, in hell than there is in heaven. Well, let's let's do something about that. Amen. 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 That's what we need to share. You know, Jesus with everybody, you know, friends and whatever we want everybody to go to heaven and so forth, so on. But let me tell you, that shows you that God was preparing for a big crowd. Amen. I heard one time that if you were to get all the population of the whole world and put everybody, like standing one in front, one on the side, just standing single file, you could fit it in the city of, I think, Jacksonville, Florida. If you were to get any, everybody individually in that, so Phoenix, I think, is just as, almost as wide as Jacksonville, so that means you could fit every human being in the world, just standing single, behind, you know, just like that, a amen, you could fit everybody in there. So this is 1,500 miles long. And high. So you can imagine how your mansion's going to be. You can imagine how the rooms are going to be. You can imagine how beautiful it's going to be. You might have, she might have her own personal ocean, I guess. And an elephant on the side, since she likes elephants. Amen? See what I'm saying? It's amazing. See, but the Bible says that, that we're going we're gonna to be there in the new, and the light of God is going to shine forth. It's going to be awesome. Amen. It's going to be awesome. And so who knows how it's going to rotate or whatever. There's, there's a beautiful picture. I forgot to show you. There it is. If you were to compare it in size, notice. There's, there's like the half part of the United States. There's Florida in the corner, in the bottom corner. That's how big this new Jerusalem is. So God has some big plans for you and I. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to start wrapping this up. Erwin Lutzer, in his book, One Minute After You Die, says this. In heaven, personal knowledge continues. Because in 1 Corinthians 13, Paul says, what I see right now is just dimly. Like if I'm looking at a foggy mirror. But then I'm, I'm going to know. Because I'm going to see him face to face. So, but in heaven, personal knowledge. You might ask, Pastor, am I going to recognize my love? You, you bet. We talked a little bit about it last year. Uh, the guy in hell, he, reckoned, he remembered his brother's. So why wouldn't us remember, amen, our loved ones and so forth? So, but pastor, how are we going to recognize their body? You're going to know it. In the spirit, you're going to know more things that you know right now. That's right, that's right, amen. So personal knowledge continues. Uh, he said personal love continues. You'll have affection and, you know, for those you knew and loved. Uh, personal feeling. The Bible says in his presence is what? Fullness of joy. At his right hand are what? Pleasures forevermore. Amen. So, so you'll have feelings. Amen. Uh, um, you know, in Revelation 6, 8, when those saints were killed during the tribulation, they were saying, Oh Lord, when are you going to avenge our blood? They wanted justice. Amen. So notice, it does not change. When you die, your, your spirit has feelings, has emotions, has, you know, can, can have, you know, these things we're talking about. Even personal activities. Some of you, you might be doing things you really love in heaven. But it, with the freedom that you've never had before. Amen. Amen. Some of you might be involved in, 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 in furthering the, what God is going to be planning for the future for us. In this new heavens and new earth. Amen. Amen. So these are some of the things we got to look forward to. But here's the thing. That's why in Ephesians uh, chapter 3 verse 15. Paul says, I pray to the father of the family in heaven and in earth. There's a family that God wanted. But, my question to you, are you registered in heaven? Yes. Do you have your registration? In fact, let me read that real quick. Hebrews chapter 12, uh, verse 23 says, To the general assembly of the church of the firstborn, who are what? Registered in heaven. See, to go to heaven, you've got to be registered. How do you do that, Pastor? Jesus is the way. Jesus is the key. Jesus is what unlocks and registers you in heaven. Amen. He in fact, 1 Peter 1, 3, and 4 also shows us 
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away. Listen, reserved in heaven for you. You got an incorruptible inheritance reserved in heaven for you. Amen. Did we get any questions? Do we get any questions? Uh, can we look at that, see if we got any questions? I just answered it. Are we going to remember loved ones that didn't make it to heaven? You probably will, but where God says He's going to remove every tear, every pain, whatever, I don't think you're going to sense the pain. You know what I'm saying? Because notice, the guy that was in hell, he was, he was crying out. He was... He, he, again, he got mission minded. He wanted his brothers to be saved. He says, I would rather stay here. I don't want them to come here. That's how bad it is. So, but it won't be a, a painful thing. Amen. So, so again, I, I might be wrong in this, but again, because I see, I see that people remembered, amen, people that possibly you will, but it won't be the way you think, though. Amen. Because he said he's going to remove every pain, every tear, and so forth. Next question. Uh, what does it mean first the believers who have died will rise from their graves okay we're going to get into that actually next week I think next week we're going to get into it but just let me briefly explain those who, have, those who have died in the Lord again like that glove their body is lying there right but where did their spirit go we already showed you present with the Lord so when Jesus, when Jesus not physically when he comes back to take the church away before the tribulation period when he comes to take the church away, he's, he's going to come and get us who are alive. What's going to happen with us that haven't died and we're alive? We're going to be transformed, the Bible says. We're going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Our body's going to be changed. We're going to escape not even seeing death, period, at all. Our bodies will be changed and we're going to receive the same glorified body that Jesus did when he rose from the dead. Amen. We'll talk about it later. Walk through walls. He ate fish and so forth. We're going to get to eat. That's, that's enough right there. That's enough right there to get excited. If you don't like my message, you're going to eat. Yay. That's enough to rejoice right there, right? Amen. I'm going to have a fountain of chocolate that comes down like a river. A fountain of chocolate with a mountain of nuts and almonds. And a, and a little statue of, of Mrs. C's. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Mrs. C's candy. <laughs> my favorite. Oh my goodness. C's candy. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. So let me answer that question. So what's going to happen? So how about the... So you're talking about the believer, right? Those who have died with, from, the, from the graves. So, so when those that have died... What's God's going to do? He's going to come down. And the Bible says... And we're going to talk about it next week. That body's going to be changed... It's going to receive a glorified body. And so those that come with Jesus, they're going to, Jesus is going to bring those people that have died. He's going to bring them with them. And then what's going to happen? They're going to enter into their new glorified body. It's going to be recreated. And this ugly body is going to be transformed. It's going to be a beautiful glove. Mr. It's going to be Mr. G. Mr. G. I got my glove, Mr. G. Right. Anyway, so he's going to be glorified. And, and he'll be awesome. Amen. And he's going to... And then the Bible says we're going to be changed too and we're going to meet them in the, in the air. So you're going to get to meet your loved ones in the air. That's right. That's right. Amen. Uh, if we will abide in the New Jerusalem, what purpose will the new earth serve? Well, that's, you're going beyond the scripture. God knows what he's doing. He's got great plans. You've you got to imagine, again, we, we might, because we have a spirit that can travel, we'll be able, see, time will be nothing to us anymore. With that glorified body, we'll be able to enter dimensions before. Who knows? I don't know if you'll travel into the earth. Didn't you, here's an example. Well, you know what? Maybe I have an answer for you. Jesus said, you did this. I'm going to give you five cities. In other words, you took control of this. So, you know, you know what? You're, when you're doing things for the Lord here, you're training for reigning. So probably in this new earth, you're going to get assigned some cities in this whatever God's going to create, and you'll be in charge. It might be your own city. Yeah. Amen. Joe's, welcome to Joe City. <laughs> Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. 
Welcome. Mine would be Chocolateville. <laughs> Amen? All you can eat chocolate. Amen? Come on. Amen? Uh, again, again, Jesus said that, that I do believe you're, you're not just going to be floating around. You're going to be doing something in the kingdom of God. Whatever it is, it's going to be good. Yeah. Amen? Uh, real quick. If we abide... Okay. Uh, are we going to continue relationships in heaven? What about people that have been in love twice? Remember we talked about that. Yes. I covered that last week. Remember somebody came to Jesus and said, this man was married, I mean this, this woman was married to this, uh, this man. He died, so he, she married the brother. He died up to seven brothers. She married, and the Sadducees, and like I said, they're sad, you see, because they don't believe in the resurrection, said, whose wife will she be? Jesus, man, you guys are so mistaken and don't know the scriptures nor the power of God. First of all, he says, you're going to be kind of like the angels because there's not going to be marriage in heaven. Mm -hmm. Amen? Sorry, you can, you know. <laughs> but I want to be, you could, don't worry, you're going to see them, you're going to have a good time. But, but it's not going to be, you're gonna, not going to be married to them. Your marriage is to Jesus now. Amen. He's the love of your life. But again, but are you going to remember them? You bet. Like I told her, she can come and visit if she wants. <laughs> My mansion. She can come and visit. Amen. But after you've been here two hours, you need to go home. You've been here too long. <laughs> she said she might be too busy doing other stuff. <laughs> I'm like, ring, ring, ring. Are you going to come and visit? No. <laughs> too busy. I'm, I'm swimming with my elephants in my ocean. And me, I'm dipping in the chocolate. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Isn't that cool? Is that the, was that it? Amen. Those are great questions. Those are thank you. So if you have any more next week, bring them on, and we'll 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 dive in. I think some of those are going to be answered next week. Amen. But let, heads bowed, eyes closed. I want to pray. If there's anyone here you've not you want to go to heaven, you're not sure if you're going to go to heaven. I want you to be sure. You can be sure. In fact, when I end the series, I'm going to give you assurance how you can know for sure that you're going to heaven. Amen. Amen. If that's you, I want to lead you in a prayer. And if you're watching through video, I want to lead you in a prayer to receive Jesus. So let's all pray this together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word. I've heard the truth that I need Jesus. I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. Lord, I'm sorry for all the things I've done. But I have believed the gospel that Jesus died on that cross and he, and he was buried and He rose again on the third day to forgive me from all my sins. Father, I receive that forgiveness in Jesus' name. Jesus, be my Lord and Savior. Change me now. Make me a new creation. I put my trust in you as my Savior and not my good works. Thank you for making me a new creation in you. Amen. Amen. Please let us know if you prayed that. Please let Pastor Lucinio let me know. Or, or if you're watching you prayed that, please let us know. We, we want to minister to you and, and give you some information and so forth. Are you learning something? Yes. Calvary. I know Jesus that you're the one.